But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were afar off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. The Old Covenant was the most extensive revelation of God to his people from the beginning of the creation up until that time. That covenant was inaugurated with the sprinkling of blood. Blood that Moses referred to as the blood of the covenant. And the record of this is found in Exodus 24, verses 7 and 8. It says that he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people, that being the law, and they said, all that the Lord has said will we do and be obedient. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, behold, the blood of the covenant, which the Lord hath made with you concerning all these words. We remember how they got out into the wilderness in the first place. It was by blood. When God instituted that first Passover, blood was such a significant part of that because they appropriated the blood of the lamb by putting it upon the side posts and upon the top lintel of the door so that when the, when the destroying angel came through and saw the blood would pass over. And so on that occasion, the blood became associated with divine deliverance in two ways. Deliverance from slavery in Egypt and deliverance from divine wrath. But deliverance from enslavement and deliverance from wrath were not the end of the application of blood. And so they came out into the wilderness and the sprinkling of the blood began this, the beginning of the occasion of the Old Covenant in which a lot was made known about God. Even Paul referred to this ministration of condemnation as having glory. There were things that were made known about God at that time. You may recall right after the sprinkling was the occasion when Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu and 70 elders, the scripture says that they saw the God of Israel. Not a full revelation, because we know no man can see the face of God and die. But the point was, God was associating this covenant with a greater and further revelation of God himself. See? At that time, there was the giving of the law. There was also the giving of the uh, ceremonial law, which represented the Levitical system. Within that system was... A tabernacle was, a, was like a central part of that system, which, by the way, the whole Levitical system was something given by God. This wasn't something that man came up with. No man came up with this. Okay? This was something that God gave to the people, which tells you something about salvation. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. In fact, most of the people did not participate in the appropriation of those sacrifices. It was the priests that did that. But the tabernacle was an important part of that system because it was here that God identified with the people as being among the camp of the people. In fact, God told us that that was the case in Leviticus. He actually said that that was the case. Leviticus 26, 11 and 12, he associates his own presence with this tabernacle, more particularly within the holiest place of that tabernacle where the mercy seat said. Remember, he told Moses that he would commune with him over the mercy seat. But he said in Leviticus 26, 11, 12, I will set my tabernacle among you. And then he went on to say, I will walk among you and will be your God and ye shall be my people. So that tabernacle was representative of the presence of God among the people. Now, the Day of Atonement was the most cr critical day of the year as far as sacrifices of blood were concerned because it was the time when two goats were offered before the Lord, before the tabernacle. One was the scapegoat, and the priest put his head upon the scapegoat. I, can you imagine this? And he confessed all the sins of the people on that scapegoat. Can you imagine how long that must have taken to do that? I don't think it was, the people have sinned and then let it go. It wasn't that way. It was a confession of the sins of the people. And they let the scapegoat go. But the other goat that was to be provided for the offering 
for, for a sin offering, remember, he also confessed the sins over that goat, and then that goat was killed. The blood of that goat was kept in a basin, and the high priest, this one time of the year, went into that holiest of holy places, not without blood, to make an offering and a sacrifice and atonement for the sins of all the people. Now, the scripture picks this up in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 7, making a point of this, that this one man, one time in the year, went into the holy place to offer this sacrifice. Nobody else went in. But the thing is, this holiest place represented the divine presence, and only one man was able to go in. And so he picks up in Hebrews 9, verse 7, But into the second went the high priest alone once a year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. And then he makes this important note in verse 8, The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made, was not yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing. Now we remember one of the very important points about the death of Christ is that when Jesus died, the scripture says that that separating veil that separated the people from God and only one man could go in through that veil to where the very presence was of God was over that mercy seat was torn in two from top to bottom. Which means access by the death of Christ was finally made for men to be drawn near, not by what they did, but why a provision of mercy that God provided for the people, which he did through his son Jesus Christ, drawing us nigh through his own blood. Now that is a marvelous thing we see there. And how do we respond to all these type of considerations? I, I was mindful of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 19 to 22. And this is kind of the application of all these things. Because all the things associated with our nearness to God, being put in Christ, being seated in the heavenly places, receiving an understanding that we might know him, all these things, redemption, all the things associated with that, had been purchased by the blood of one person who went into that holy place one time, not without blood, to offer a sacrifice. And having made eternal redemption, we are provided a way to come in to that place through that blood. That's a marvelous thing. So here's the application. Having therefore, brethren, boldness, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. And then he goes on to say, let us hold fast this profession of faith. And you know what this profession of faith is? It is that we have a boldness to draw near to God by faith alone, in the blood of Jesus Christ and what he offered alone in the holiest place before God, not in a tabernacle made with hands, but in heaven itself. And that's not just the boldness by which you came in when you got in. That's the boldness by which you always approach unto God. And if there's any other thing that becomes the basis of your boldness, you won't get in. That's not keeping the profession of your faith. It's faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. And so what we do when we come here to this Lord's table, we shine up our understanding of what's really the basis by which we draw near to God with boldness. A right that has been purchased by the blood of Christ through the purpose of God on our behalf. And so let's take advantage of that privilege that God has given us and to receive this supper, which is a communion with God, by faith in Christ. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. We're thankful for the faith that has provided access for us to Christ through his blood. We're thankful that you've made a way in his death so that we can be drawn nigh. And so we remember him. This morning as we seek to, to 
draw even nearer to you during this time and to remember Christ and what he has done. Thank you so much for the blood of Christ Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen.